in our country on zero hours contract. Probably some people watching tonight at home waiting for that text message to say whether you have work tomorrow. Now, David Cameron says he couldn't live on a zero hours contract. Well, nor could I, David. But the difference with me is I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to legislate. So if you do regular hours, you get a regular contract, not a zero hours contract. And it goes to what kind of country we build. Do we build a country with security for working families and for our young people? But when or based on insecurity? But Ed, you haven't. The problem is, Ed Ed Ed, zero hour Ed, contracts the, and turned down that opportunity uh, in Wales. They voted against a Plaid Cymru <coughs> amendment to end zero hour contracts in the care sector. So why should people believe what you say on zero hour contracts? Thank you. But also, yeah, we, I mean, I think that yeah, makes a good point because we discovered today there are about 70 Labour MPs that employ people on zero hours contracts, so and they obviously haven't got to the bit about practicing where they preach. But there is a bigger point here. Yesterday. A hundred of business leaders from some of the most uh, iconic business brands, large and small, said that the plan that we have is getting the country back to work, is getting the country on the right track. And if we go off that with Ed Miliband's plan, we put the country at risk, the recovery at risk, well, and jobs at risk. There you have and it. for young people, yeah, you that's the it. most important thing of there all. You have it. so there you have it. So zero hours contract is necessary Ed for our no. economy to succeed. No, what, what, there you have it. That's what you're saying, David. the zero look, jobs approach that we got under Labour. Never mind the sound bites, David. You're defending. I mean, zero hours thank you. Thank you. Thank and yes, jobs. That's there is a big choice. There is a big choice at this general election. He thinks that as long as a few corporations and individuals do well, the richest and most powerful, the wealth will trickle down to everyone else. Well, he, we've tried that experiment over the last five years. It's no, failed. Party it's leaders, failed. thank you this, very much indeed for your comments on that uh, very comprehensive question from Rebecca. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of our free-flowing debate. There's been a lot discussed here over the last two hours, a lot for us all to reflect upon. Before we conclude tonight, I'd like now to invite each of the leaders to make a final and brief statement on why they think you should vote for their party on May the 7th. And I'll turn first to Nicola Sturgeon. Tonight, the choice at this election has been clear. You can vote for the same old parties and get the same old politics more cuts and more misguided priorities. Or you can vote for something different, better and more progressive. I'm going into this election with a clear message. None of us can afford more austerity. None of us can afford an additional £30 billion of cuts. And none of us can afford the £100 billion that the Tories, Labour and Liberals intend to spend on new nuclear weapons. Their priorities are wrong. But they won't pay the price. It will be ordinary people across the country who pay the price. The SNP offers an alternative, a clear alternative, a plan for investment. Yes, it is fiscally responsible, but it will also allow us to invest in infrastructure, to protect our public services and to lift people out of <coughs> poverty. To people in Scotland, I say vote SNP for a louder voice for Scotland. To people elsewhere, I say ours will be a voice to help bring about change for you too. Nicola Sturgeon, thank you. Nick Clegg. <coughs> well, thank you for sitting through this uh, two-hour uh, political marathon. I just have one more thing to ask of you, and it is this. When you vote, Make sure that you decide what's right for you and your family. Make sure that you do what's right for our country. But above all, make sure that we don't lurch this way or that. Make sure that we don't borrow too much on the one hand or cut too much on the other. In other words, make sure that when you vote, we keep our country stable and strong and fair. And the only way we can do that is by finishing the job, finishing it fairly, balancing the books, doing it fairly and putting money into our public services. Because that's the only way that we can create the society that I imagine we all want. A society where we have a stronger economy and a fairer society, where there is opportunity for everyone. Nick Clegg, thank you. Ed Miliband. You've heard from seven leaders tonight, but there's one fundamental choice at this election. Do we build a Britain that puts working people first, or do we carry on with a government that's not on your side? If I'm Prime Minister, I'll make sure we reward the hard work of everybody in our country, not just those who get the six-figure bonuses. If I'm Prime Minister, I'll take on those energy companies that are ripping you off. If I'm Prime Minister, everyone will play by the same rules. We won't give the green light to tax avoidance. And if I'm Prime Minister, we'll cut the deficit every year, and balance the books, but we'll protect health and education. There is a big choice at this election. I believe that it's when working people succeed that Britain succeeds. If you believe that too, I ask for your support. 
and let's bring the change that Britain needs. Ed Miliband, thank you very much indeed. Liam Wood. I hope that what you've heard here tonight doesn't fill you with too much despair. Despite what you've heard, there is an alternative to the Westminster consensus in favour of more cuts. Austerity is not inevitable, it's a choice. We can have a future where everyone has access to decent public services, where everyone can have a decent standard of living, but not if we keep doing things the way we always have done. For a stronger, more prosperous, greener Wales, for a Wales that counts, for a devolution and financial settlement that is no longer set second rate, give your vote to Plaid Cymru, the party of Wales. For Wales to be strong, like Scotland, Plaid Cymru must be strong. The more strength you give us, the greater influence we will have. Let us be the success we know we can be. Thank you. Diolch yn fawr. <laughs> Diolch yn fawr. Leanne Wood. Natalie Bennett. If you want change, you have to vote for it. I say <laughs> vote for what you believe in. You don't have to go on voting for the lesser of two evils. That's how we ended up with the tired, failed politics that we have now. If you want a fair economy, a public NHS, a stable climate, vote for change, vote green. Already in Parliament, we've seen Caroline Lucas make a huge impact. We need more MPs like Caroline. With a strong group of green MPs, we can deliver a new kind of politics. You can deliver a peaceful political revolution. Wherever you are, in England, Wales, Scotland or Northern Ireland, if you're thinking about voting Green, do it. Your vote will count. Natalie Bennett, thank you. Nigel Farage. You see, I warned you at the beginning, I said they were all the same. <laughs> and, what you've, and what you've seen tonight is the politically correct political class. Oh, they're very keen to be popular on the international stage. They don't understand the thoughts, hopes and aspirations of ordinary people in this country. They are detached. Most of them have never had a job in their lives. Uh, what we represent in UKIP is plain spoken patriotism. We believe in this country. We believe in its people. We think Britain can be a lot better than this. But if you want things to be shaken up and to change properly, you've got to put more UKIP MPs in Westminster. We won two by-elections last year. We can outshine all expectations on May the 7th. Let's do it. Nigel Farage, thank you. David Cameron. Thank you. I've been your Prime Minister for the last five years, and all that time I've tried to have one task in mind, above all others, and that has been turning our economy around, putting the country back to work, and clearing up the mess that was left to us. I want to stand for another five years because I want us to finish the job that we've all started. We've created two million jobs. Let's create a job for everyone who wants and needs one. We've cut the deficit in half. Let's clear it all together and have Britain back in the black. We've invested in our national health service. Let's keep doing that and make sure it's a genuine service seven days a week for you and your family all year round. What my plan is about is basically one word, security. Security for you, for your family, for our country. This is an amazing country, and we're on our way back. And there's a fundamental choice at this election. Stick with the plan and with the team who brought that plan, because it's working and it's helping. Or put it all at risk by the people who gave us the spending, the debt, the taxes and the waste. I say, let's stick to the plan that's working. Let's not go back to square one. Let's finish what we started. David Cameron, thank you very much indeed. My thanks too also to Nicola Sturgeon, to Leanne Wood, to Ed Miliband, to Nigel Farage, to Nick Clegg and to Natalie Bennett. It has been a fascinating debate and also a big thank you to all our audience here for all their questions and to you at home for watching and those, of course, who joined us online. Stay with us now on ITV for reaction and analysis on News at 10 and after that, a special debate night edition of The Agenda with Tom Bradby. Thanks again for watching and good night.
And as the general election campaign unfolds, join in with ITV as we look to get answers to all the big questions. Download the ITV News Daily Poll app now to have your say on the latest stories and see what the rest of the nation are thinking.